I'm going now to mix a color, ultramarine with light red. It'll be a purplish blue. Now, if we take a mass of land coming out from the left of the gridded wash into the sea, there we go, broken top for trees, falling down into the water, and there's the bottom of that land mass. Over here we have another bank of trees, just give a different top to them. There's a fir trees, there's forest, there's a forest growing here on this side, and that's the broken top. But this is putting wet washes over a dry wash. The underlying wash is now completely dry. Uh, put a bit of a straight bottom. You'll always find whenever you're putting something into water that the water lies level. And it's very important that you do that because if you have this line running slightly uphill or slightly downhill, it looks as if the water's going to fall out of the lake or the sea or whatever. The water should always cut off level. Now we want to put some um, sh reflections in the water, so I'm just thinning down the paint with water and running a few reflection lines across there. If we have a hill, the reflection is going to come deeper here. You know, it's going to be coming further down the paper. We'll put some reflections on this side as well, just to show that this landmass is reflecting in the ripples of the water. Now, with a different brush, we're going into the number five. And this is quite a small brush. I want to get a red color here. So I'm using some crimson and light red. And from the old pretender song, red sails in the sunset. So we can pop a little sail there. Pop one in there. Coming down. It's just a small exercise. It doesn't have to be perfect. There's another sail. And then we need to put a little boat underneath that. So I'm going back into the dark mixture of light red and ultramarine because we're silhouetted against a light sky. So I'm coming back here to put a little boat in there. As I say, it's only an exercise to show how colors work and how washes work. We just put in a little boat and then with the rigor changing again, I'm going to put in a mast. We just dot that in like that and a reflection of the boat, change the shape of that, and a reflection of the sail. Back into the red color again, and we put a little reflection there. And again, a reflection is never as definite as the original above, because there's ripples in the water. Now with the number five brush, I'm going to get a, a greenish color, and this is the mixture of Windsor yellow and Windsor blue, with a bit of light red, and this is just to give the impression of a bit of grass growing here in the foreground and we just push the brush up against itself. I'm going to add some water to that. This is just to give a bit of detail in the foreground and something to break up this area. There we are. Very, very simply putting that in. Now I'm going back into the palette for a dark mixture again and this is light red and ultramarine because there's a fence along the front of the painting. That's dark enough. And we put a little fence in there. There's one, two, three posts and a few rails on them. They're all broken. They're not uniform. So that right away has built up a painting out of a simple wash. Washing off the brush, there's a few birds flying homeward. So we get a dark color for silhouetted birds in the sky. And just with the point of the rigger, put in a couple of little birds flying off into the sunset. The sun, we forgot about the sun. So we have to put in a red setting sun, a bit of water now. And I'm just gonna put a bit of yellow into that. There we are. You're doing circles like that, you really have to hold your breath a bit because it can be very difficult to get a circle because when you're talking your hand tends to move. Now I'm just going to blend that out. There we are. Simple painting out of a simple wash. Now we'll go back to the house. I think it should be dry. Yeah. We want to put a shadowed side. I'm changing the brush again back to the number eight round 
and this time I want to get a shadow color. The wash that I find works, or the mixture that I find works for shadow, is a mixture of ultramarine and light red. Now again, this is a very weak wash, lots of water into it, just to give me a hint of purplish blue. A lot more water in there just to thin that down. Now you'll find if you glaze this wash over the surface of the house, we'll have the sunlight coming onto the, the side, the gable side of the house. So therefore, this end here is going to be in shadow. Now you'll always find that the underlying wash will shine through, and that's why we paint it on initially. And it influences the color of the shadow side. Now, the side of the chimney, you're going to have a wash on there as well. You can see the difference in color between that wall and the side of the chimney because there was no underlying color on the chimney side. We're also going to have a shadow down that side of the window, down that side of the doorway, and along the top of the window and the door. We will also have a shadow cast by the under eaves of the roof because that is overhanging the wall. We'll have a shadow cast down the inside of that wall because the sunlight has been kept off the wall by the roof overhanging that side. We let that dry. But while that's drying, we'll pop a few windows in there, going back to the number five brush. The same two colors that we used for the shadows, ultramarine and light red. We can thicken that mix just by using less water, roll the brush in the tray, to give us a nice point to the brush, we can just set in four panes of glass. One, two, three, four. And a couple over there as well. One, two. And on the top of this door, we have a pane of glass. So I'm just going to put that in as well. That right away gives you the impression of panes of glass in the window because the glass, if if it's dark inside the house, we're looking through clear glass, so what you're going to see is the darkness. While we're waiting on that to dry, we can go ahead and put on a roof tile. The mixture for the roof tile is going to be crimson and light red, and I find in this area you have a lot of red pan tiles on houses, so we're going to try and get that colour, and we're using, as I say, the crimson and light red, and we always paint the roof in the direction of the fall. You can see that this once we go back, this line is a lot shorter than this line because as something recedes, it gets smaller. So we get the top of the roof and then we pull that down, leaving some white flecks on the roof. Don't worry about having to cover it all in because what we have is light reflecting and bouncing off the top of the pan tiles and therefore you're going to get white flecks. We need to be very careful that this wash isn't wet, so I'm coming down not to the bottom line because we'll bleed into the, the wet wash. So I'm going to leave a bit of a space between the roof and the wall. And thinning the wash down slightly for the other side of the roof because there's more light on this side. And we thin the wash down by adding water. Find the top line and then pull it down in the direction of the fall. Leaving some white flecks. This should be dry now, so I can come right down to the edge. Now, the surface of the wall, it's a stone wall, so you're going to have a bit of figuring in there as well. Just using the same color, I can set in a few stones here and there just to give a bit of texture on the wash. The underlying wash is dry, so we can overlay it with a wet wash. Now, just to give the house a wee bit of body, I'll go back into the, the green colours again with the number 8 brush using the Windsor yellow and Windsor blue. Pop a little tree in behind the house. Turning the brush on the side, we can put a tree there. Filling that right down using the point of the brush now to cut around the top of the roof. We don't want to come over the roof, otherwise the tree then comes forward and it looks as if it's clambering over the roof of the house. There's a broken edge there. Now we need the darker shade of green, and this is Windsor Yellow with Windsor Blue again, only more Windsor Blue this time, and we put in a bit of shadow into the tree. 
along the front of the house, I'm going into another mixture of Windsor Yellow and Windsor Blue, but with more Windsor Yellow this time. And I'm going to put some grass in the front of the house. There we are. And there's a bit of a path coming this way. And it's widening as it comes towards me. We need a path from that door as well. And it's joining up with that. So there, very, very quickly, with loose washes, we can build up the structure of the landscape. We need to put some kind of a darkness in this area because it makes the house come forward. If we put a darkness behind the lighthouse, it really makes the house stand out. So I'm looking for a darker green by introducing some Windsor Blue and light red into the mixture of Windsor Yellow and Windsor Blue. And we can just spin a little dark bush. There's one popping up behind the house there, underneath the eaves. It's a little conifer. And we can bring those two greens together like that. If we want to feed some darkness into that tree now that is beginning to dry, we just use light red and ultramarine, and it can put a little bit of dark shadow in there to the dense part of the tree. And just thin that out slightly with water. There we are. And again, a little fence just to break this area using the side of the number eight brush and continue this bush is running off the side of the house. There's some more um, light yellow color I want to put in there just to break up between the dark and the light green. There we are. But very simply, we can build up a painting by glazing over one wash with another wash. Now available to buy. Try these techniques at home whenever you wish. The extended DVD of today's workshop is now available from the Painting and Drawing channel. For further information and to order your copy, go to www.paintingdrawingchannel.com.